Coming back to one of our top stories, China's deployment of missiles in the Paracel Islands is once again sparking international outrage. Joining us all the way from Washington is Greg Poling. He is the director of the Asia Maritime Transparency Initiative at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, or CSIS for short. Greg, thank you very much for joining me this morning. First things first, what are we to make of the timing of this escalation? Uh, this is coming just a day, in fact, just uh, uh, several hours after the U.S. ASEAN summit when President Barack Obama specifically said that they are, you know, issued the statement saying that we will, uh, all tensions in the region should be tackled in a peaceful manner. Well, we shouldn't, I think, uh, connect this to the Sunnyland Summit because the Fox News story that first broke this suggested that they were deployed, these missiles were deployed sometime last week. Uh, so it likely predated, though it could have certainly been meant to send a message knowing the leaders were coming. I think more reasonable assumption is that it's linked to the Freedom of Navigation operation uh, near Triton Island, uh, which the U.S. Uh, USS Curtis Wilbur undertook last month that was uh, also near the Paracels. Uh, Greg, nevertheless, we do have uh, comments from Secretary of State John Kerry, and he sounds like uh, he's quite disappointed that China's militar mi militarizing, in fact, no less after President Xi Jinping had promised uh, at the White House that he would not do so. Does this change the debate in the U.S. at all about what direction the ne next phase of the pivot to Asia strategy should take? Well, Secretary Kerry and I think everybody in the administration here in Washington are understandably disappointed. It's worth noting that President Xi's uh, statement about not militarizing, which, which he made uh, outside the White House when he met with President Obama last year, he said he would, that China would not militarize the Spratly Islands. He didn't say the whole of the South China Sea, so there's a bit of nuance there that I expect we'll see China start to uh, pick at and use to explain why it's okay for them to have done this farther north in the Paracels. But regardless, it's clearly a violation of the spirit of what uh, President Xi pledged and the spirit of what the U.S. has been demanding. Now, I don't think it's a game changer, so to speak. It won't fundamentally alter the U.S. pivot because, frankly, most, uh, I think, Washingtonians and, and most folks in the Washington administration uh, always expected that this would happen, that China would continue to militarize, that all of the work it's been doing in the Spratlys, uh, as well as work it's been doing in the Paracels of Woody Island, has been intended to allow it to do these kinds of deployments very quickly and place military infrastructure on the islands whenever it decides it needs to. You're absolutely right. I mean, we have Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi also insisting that the reports were invented by, by Western media. And he goes so far as to say that any build out of military facilities on these islands were very much under their uh, sovereign right. In fact, I believe we have a soundbite from the minister himself. Let's take a listen first. We are just now. 几分钟之前才看到这方面的有人告诉我们有这方面的报道我想恐怕还是一种某种西方个别媒体想制造新闻的一种做法至于中国在我们驻守的岛礁上所建设的有限的必要的自卫的设施这完全是根据国际法所给予任何一个主权国家的自保权和自卫权它无可非议 Again, he was basically saying that military presence there, Beijing's military presence there, is very much under their sovereign right, and so there should be no more questions about it from henceforth. What do you make of this? China has always maintained, well, since, since President Xi made his statement about not militarizing, that uh, militarization didn't mean the defensive uh, military equipment that China feels it has a right to put here. So certainly Beijing will argue that placing surface-to-air missiles are intended as a means of defense, not offense. Uh, I think that's a pretty thin excuse. I think that that's the way Washington certainly sees it and regional states will see it. Uh, any form of, of militarization here is not helpful and it risks getting us into a, a spiral where uh, there's a tit-for-tat maneuver where one person, you know, one party places a certain bit of equipment, another party, either the U.S. or one of the Southeast Asian states, moves to counter that. And that's how you get into, into the classic security dilemma of escalation, which is exactly what we want to avoid here in the South China Sea. Tit-for-tat, that's right. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Greg, we appreciate it.